Hi everyone, we are working on proportions and similar figures. This is Mrs. Osher and Ms. Perrier and we're getting started. So what's a proportion? It's a part, a share, or a number considered in comparative relation to a whole. I know that's a whole lot of words. It's basically two fractions set equal to each other. It's a dilation, it's a thousand things, but that's the specific definition of it. So how do we determine if two ratios are equal if they reduce to the same fraction slash decimal then they are equal? This is something that we've seen in elementary school. So this is something that you should already know and have seen before. And it's just something that we're just going to continue to make more complex. So how do we solve a proportion? This is cross multiplication. This is what we've been practicing. So for something like this, it's going to be 6 times 15 equals 5x. And you get x equals 18 when you work through your algebra. We're expecting that you're very familiar with this by now. And the next one, because you have a monomial times a binomial, remember when you multiply 6 times the quantity x minus 6, you're going to have to distribute to end up with x is 12. And same thing on the last one you are going to have to distribute that one technically to the 21 minus x and end up with 7 once you do the algebra. So here's our problem. we got a ratio of boys to girls in the class is 4 to 3. If there are 20 boys in the class, how many girls are there? So if you get a question like this and you see ratio, you're going to have to set up a proportion here. So the ratio from boys to girls is 4 to 3. So 4 over 3. And so if you have 20 boys, it's going to go on the same top. At, on top with the boys. So you're going to get 20 over girls equals 4 over 3. And you can substitute that girls for x. And then we could do the same exact thing as what we know how to do, cross multiply and solve for x. Just like that. All right, next problem. Sometimes they do it like this, where they say ratio of boys to girls is 1 to 3, but then they say there's 28 students in the class. So instead of it being boys to girls, that's not actually the ratio we need to deal with. We need a total ratio. So we want girls to total students. So I know that the 3 represents the ratio of girls, and the students would be that total, just like when we partitioned. So that would be 4, because 1 plus 3 is 4. From there, it's going to be that same setup. 28 is the student. Students, so I put it in the corresponding spot of my proportion, cross multiply and solve. So for this one, we got a triangle as angles of a ratio of 1 to 2 to 3. What is the size of each angle? So for this one, we should know that a triangle's angles add up to 180 degrees. That's something that we should know here. So we're going to get that specific angle over 180 equals our first ratio, which was 1, over the total, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3, equals 6. So you got to do that one, do that one out for 1, get what your angle is, and then just do the same exact thing for 2 and 3, and then get what your angles are. We're not going through the algebra with you today because you guys should know how to solve for a variable at this point, so we're not walking you through each step of that. Uh, you're cross-multiplying and you're solving, so that's what's happening. A uh, recipe instructs the cook to use four cups of water for every three cups of powder. If you use ten cups of water, how much powder should be added? Again, it's cups to powder, cups to powder, water to powder, water to powder. It's whatever the ratio that they're giving you is. You set that up, you substitute whatever you can, and cross multiply. So what is the definition of similarity? So this is what our unit is basically going to be on. So that is two figures that are the same shape with proportional sides and congruent angles. You're going to hear that all throughout this chapter. Proportional sides and congruent angles. So the angles are going to be the same no matter what here. We are going to ask you for those two facts frequently throughout this entire chapter. So be sure you know them. All right, so similar similarity statement is very uh, similar huh, to a congruent statement. It's just using that similar symbol instead of the congruent symbol. So when you see that squiggle, that means similar. It's telling you that the proportional sides and the congruent angle. So just like when we know angle A is congruent to angle D, we know side AB is proportional to side DE. Okay, so if we use that similarity statement uh, to fill these in, so the angles are always congruent, so M is the first one and A is the first one, so I know that those would be the same. And then here, RG, so what I would be doing right now is I'd be looking up here to be clear, RG are the last two letters, BC on the bottom that of that are the last two letters in the other triangle. GM are the last and first, so CA would be the last and first. You're just finding that corresponding match. Um, over on this last one, I'm always going to focus here first, MR to MG, so I'm going within the same triangle. 
first two, first and last. So that means I would need AB because it's the first two. And you just keep going through there. So I would maybe even recommend pausing the video. I'm just going to put the answers there. Um, see if you can make sense of those last couple. You're just using the letters in the order that they're going in to find the, essentially the pattern to find the corresponding pieces. So how do I use this to solve missing sides and missing angles? So again, you have your two triangles that are similar there. So you can see the sides are different or proportional and the angles are the same. So how to solve this is you're going to set up a proportion. So your question mark is going to be where your X is. So you're going to do 28 over your X. So dealing with the small triangle. Then you're going to set that equal to the bigger triangle, which is 42 over 33. Now you see those are the same sides, so that's how we're going to set up our proportion. Then you're going to just cross multiply and solve for X. To, um, just so you know, there are always four correct ways to set up a proportion. So if you don't get this exact proportion that we have, always wait until the cross multiplication step. If you multiply the same things, you are still correct. There are always four correct ways to set up a proportion. All right, so over here, how do I use similarity to solve these? So in this case, you really have to focus on what the corresponding pieces are. Now, rightfully so, we should have some angle markings here to help us out. So we should know that like those angles are congruent to one another so that we can then realize that if those angles are congruent, those are our corresponding pieces. So you might want to add those angle markings in because they are necessary to help you get through this. And then from there, X is over 60 as 117 is over 130. So you cross multiply and solve and there you go. So for this one, we have B and we have A. So our scale factor from A to B is 2 to 3. So we can just use that scale factor to set up our proportion. So B goes with 2. So you're going to do the I just realized I think I have this typo, 2 over 3, because it says A to B, A is the X. Typo in the PowerPoint. Sorry, everybody. So again, that's just 2 over 3 equals X over 12. So when you cross multiply, you get 3X equals 24 and X equals 8. Ignore whatever comes up after this when I click the button. <laughs> But that's a really good, it's, a, it's honestly a happy mistake because it's showing you make sure you're paying attention to what direction you're going in. It said A to B, so I should have been going X over 12, not 12 over X. Oh, it still ended up being 8, though. It worked out. That's good. So these two quadrilaterals are similar. So what is the value of X? So now you have to use your similar statement, which was just circled, to find what sides are proportional to one another, since you have a lot going on there. So as you can see, EF is going to be similar to JK. So those two sides that are labeled red keep you involved in our proportion. And then the two sides that are labeled green are going to be your other side of your so when you set that up, you got x over 2x plus 1.5 equals 8 over 18. Then you're just going to cross multiply and solve for x. Okay, going into some uh, bigger word problems. I mean, not that big, but a gymnasium is 96 feet long and 75 feet wide. On a blueprint, the gymnasium is five and a half inches long to the nearest tenth of an inch. What is the width of the gymnasium? Now, before any of you think you need to convert, you do not. As long as you are setting things up proportionally and in corresponding order, the units will take care of themselves. So in this case, I have feet to feet, and then I'm going to have inches to inches, so I'm fine. If it asks at the end, like, if these if all of these were asking for centimeters, we would have to do some conversions in the end. But the units will take care of themselves. So 96 feet long to 75 feet wide, 5.5 inches long, so that goes on the top of my fraction, over x, cross multiply and solve. Uh, and then 4.29 will round to 4.3, so that's how I know that that is my final answer. So we got our last one here. We get G. We're looking for GK. Oh, I don't, yeah, finding GK. Oh, we're sorry. looking for GK there. So we got to see which sides are proportional to one another. So as we can see here, is that we have JK and FH are parallel. So we should automatically know about alternate interior angles. So that's how we're going to find which angles are congruent to one another, therefore getting what sides are going to be proportional to one another. So as it's highlighted in red, you can see that it's going to be 8 over 12 because those sides are proportional over our what we're trying to find, GK, which is X over 11. So again, cross multiply 
and just solve for x. And there you go. We are going to be setting up proportions all chapter long, so we hope you are ready. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you in class.